Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo and Publisher and Designer um, tutorial. Now at the outset I would like to say that I'm not in any way affiliated to Serif. Um, I've never worked for them and I haven't been offered these for free to review them in any way shape or form but I want to have a look at their Mystical Lights Overlay Collection and it's currently on sale at the time of recording it's currently on sale in their Black Friday sale um, but if we have a quick look at what's on offer here um, as you can see I mean this is in English pounds I don't know what it is in other parts of the world but it's currently on sale for £20.49 p but we've got 525 mystical light overlays and they've got some sort of samples of what they have on offer and then we have a list here of all the different things that they have on offer in this pack which includes the images in JPEG format and in asset format and they also do also have somewhere down here the macros which only work in Affinity Photo but all the others will work in Publisher and Designer. There is also a link down here where you can get some creative inspiration where they look at it a bit more where a bit further down they've got sort of instructions on how to use them and then they've got more sa the samples of all the different overlays that they have on offer so these are parts that you can sort of check out before you decide to buy now this sort of the reason for this video came about when someone in a Facebook group asked they are having trouble using macros, they're sort of new to Affinity Photo, in this case they were using it um, they were struggling with the macros, they couldn't work out how to use them and how to use the overlay sort of properly so I was, sort of, I was helping them out with that and while I was helping them out I checked out this pa these pages and I thought that's not too bad so I, I bought them myself so I thought I'd make a video sort of showing beginners how to get them, use them and sort of get the best out of these um, overlays. So like I said there is, um, I don't think it's in this bit actually, but this page here is sort of a general guide from Infinity to install resources, be they brushes or in this case the overlays so that's just a general guide that you get from Affinity so if you then go and purchase them and you have them and you will get the downloads page and in the downloads pages you've got they're all individually listed so you have to click on each one to download them why they kind of put them all together I really don't understand might have made the file too big I'm guessing but so you get the eight downloads of the zip files and if you scroll down the page a bit more you will then get the eight asset files to download and right down the bottom you have the single macros file to download. If you don't have Affinity Photo, you don't necessarily need to bother with that last one. And even further down at the bottom, you've got links to an installation guide, which I believe is, um, if I come back to here, I think it's pretty much the same as what I have already opened, sort of similar guide to this sort of saying how you use, how you use it there is also you can open up the PDF for the license agreement and as is, there is a commercial license with this pack 
if you're going to use it commercially it might be a good idea to open the PDF and save it so you have a copy of that agreement and then there is a PDF that you can open up with a tutorial which again is pretty similar to this um, overlays um, page that was linked in the original advert which tells you how to use them it has this basic how to use it thing in both of those so that is let me show those down so once you have downloaded them you will have the 8 zip files now I'm doing this on a PC on, on a Mac I'm, I'm guessing it would be pretty similar and I really don't know how this would work on iPads but I'm I'm assuming it works the same way um, you have the 8 zip files that has all the JPEGs images you then have the 8 asset files these don't have to be unzipped they are okay as they are you have the single macros file again doesn't need to be unzipped and I have also downloaded the PDFs of the license and the user guide so if I just double click on this as you can see this is the user guide here and again it's just similar to the instructions about how to use these files and it has a, you know, a bit more information about how to use them so it was a good idea to download that user guide if you are a beginner now with the zip files once you have them you, you obviously need to unzip them now I've unzipped seven of these I've only got number eight to go like I said on the, I'm doing this on a PC how you unzip them on Macs and iPads I really do not know but on a PC I can just right click extract all and then you have the destination where you want to extract it but I'm extracting it to this file and then and extract that and we now have number eight so if I just have a quick look and say look in number seven alive lights there are all the various overlays that can be used so coming back to affinity photo again like I said before previously you can do this in designer and publisher as well but I've opened this image that I got from pixabay.com and basically all you would need to do is pick an overlay of lights that you like say for example this one here that I've got in the alive lights folder I'll go for number two so I'll double click on that to open it in Affinity Photo and you can either do this from the edit menu and come up to copy or you can use Control plus C but I personally prefer just to come to the layer in the layers panel right click and come down to copy and then come back to the image that you want this to add this to and come up to the edit menu and come down to paste or you can use control and V or command and V on a Mac and paste that layer as you can see over here above the image below now what you need to do now is to change the blend mode of this layer and the you can use any blend mode that works for you but the one that you should really use is the screen blend mode because the screen blend mode will lose all the black in the image and just leave you with the lighter areas so we come down to screen and then you can come to the move tool and position this wherever you want it I mean say so you want to put it there like that 
and you can even sort of lower the opacity of that effect to just get a sort of the feel of those lights. Let me just zoom out a little bit so we can see that bit better. There we go. And like I said, you can, you don't have to stick with screen, but some of the others, so that is add light color, vivid light. That one there is pin light. But they are basically designed to work with the screen blend mode. But if you want to experiment, feel free to do so. And if you wanted to sort of rotate this, let me get rid of that a second. So we're on this layer which has got the lights. You can come to the arrange menu and you could rotate it or you could flip it horizontally so the flames are going off in that direction. So you're not restricted to the size that they come in or the opacity they come in or the, you know, the orientation that they come in. You can adapt them however you feel like. Let me just put that back that way. So that is sort of how you can use the overlays and there's as you can see there's hundreds of them so you can make many sorts of different images so that is the looking at the not the JPEGs images and let's want to have a look at the assets and then the macros so starting with the assets let me delete that delete so for the assets you need to open the assets manager and to do that it's not open by default you come up to the view menu down to studio and then assets and then the assets menu will open up here and up in the top sort of right corner of the assets panel there's this menu click on that and then you can have import assets and then you just got to navigate to wherever you have downloaded your files and as you can see here we have the assets listed so I'm going to go for the number seven ones again so just highlight the one you want click open and you'll have to wait a while because there's a lot of images to be installed and there we go they are all now installed into the assets panel and then all you need to do is with the one you want I'm going to use the same one here you can just click on it drag it out and bring that into the finity photo and it will come as a new layer and then much like before with the previous version you can just resize it change its blend mode to screen and basically it will work in exactly the same way put it about there so it's just a case of clicking the asset and dragging it onto the file that you're working on. Now, the only problem with assets is they do take up a lot of memory space because they are you've got all these files loaded into memory. So the more asset packs that you have open in the assets uh, panel, it could start slowing down your computer if you are sort of short of memory space which is why I personally I sort of keep mine in a separate place and if I know that I'm going to be using them um, I will then enter, uh, import the assets use them and then once I've finished using them 
um, there, I believe it was, yeah, delete category. So I will delete this and just say yes. And then that assets will no longer be in Affinity Photo. They are still obviously on my computer, so I can bring them back in at any time that I want. So let me just close the assets panel. Put this back in the middle. And then the last thing to look at is the macros. Now, much like the, let me get rid of this. Um, no, let's not get rid of this. Let's put this back on to normal and bring the opacity back up to 100. So then we're going to look at the macros. So we need either and or the macros panel open and the libraries panel open. So much like the assets panel, you come to view, studio, and we've got macro and library. Um, in this case, you only really need the library, but I'm going to open both. So that's macro, studio, and library. Mainly because there are two types of macro files. Um, in this case, this is AF macros with an S on the end. If it doesn't have the S on the end, it is a single macro. And if it is, it does have the S on the end, it is a collection of macros. So, if it is a single macro, so that ha the file without the S on the end, you'd come to the macro file, and you can click on this and import find the file and import that single macro and then you can add it to the library by clicking on this icon here but in this case these macros it's a collection of macros so they are imported via the libraries tab let me just shut that down as you can see I've got loads of macros here but again this menu in the top right of the panel, you click on that and import macros. Navigate to where yours are saved and then highlight it, click open and wait for them to be installed, which I think they have. Here we now have the Mystical Lights macro. And let's have a look at them. Now, I've not seen this in operation myself because this is the first time I've installed them. So the very first one is changing this layer, the overlay, to the screen blend mode. So if I just click on that, as you can see it has changed that layer from normal to screen. Now quite why you need a macro to do a simple step like that, I don't know. I don't fully really understand that you can just do it yourself but if you are a beginner and you've forgotten which blend mode you need to use these macros may come in handy see again you have what's this one add blend mode let's see what this does yeah I'm guessing it's just repeated I really don't know what that did. If we go back one step, yeah, it just seems to have increased the blend mode. So, but anyway, you got the, you can rotate right, flip, horizontal. So these are all just one step macros. So if I click on this one, as you can see, it has flipped it horizontally. Let's what have we got over here. Overlay prepare 23 steps. Right, let's go back to da 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 da. Let's go back to about there. Yes. So I'm, you can. I'm using the history tab to go back 
to a point before I use those macros and we'll try this overlay prepare and see what happens click on that don't know oh it has added oh, I see it's added some extra adjustments as child layers to that layer so the enhance reduce and the color shift are all working because they've got a tick next to them and the recolor and black and white adjustments are there but so they've got that one recolored to red or you can change it to black and white and if you want to make adjustments you just double click on a particular one and adjust accordingly to maybe slightly alter how they've set it up so that's basically how you use the macros you will install them into the library and then just click on them to alter the overlays how you see fit so basically that is about it I think hopefully that covers how you download them and install them or import them into Affinity Photo and once you have them in Affinity Photo how you can use and adapt them so while they are on offer in the Black Friday sale it might be worth taking a punt and buying them or wait until maybe the Christmas sale or just buy them at whatever price they are currently available at the time you are watching this so hopefully this has been help to some beginners and thank you for watching and goodbye.